Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today we are in <laughs> Wapakoneta, Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> just, With a freshly charged battery. We just ate at a really good place. That was good food. Best, uh, what do you call it? Buffalo barbecue sauce I've ever had. What was it? Where were we? Oh. J. Marie's. So if you're ever in Wapakoneta, stop in J. Marie's. That's not the entrance either. We are at the Og Og Lays Antique Mall. Never been here before. We're going to get inside, check it out. Richard is obviously with us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let's do it, guys. Here we go. This is the exterior. Again, the Og Lays Antique Mall. Let's get inside some nosy children okay guys first off the bat we have this amazing mantle lamp here obviously the shade is not original to the piece but it's got quite a look to it this piece i've actually had the pleasure of selling before it is a westmoreland covered dish obviously with the lion sculpt i love this piece i just think that the subject matter is a little unusual so 60 dollars is really the going rate for that piece cool to see Moving on now, we're into a different booth. We've got some weird, strange little baby doll. She's not too creepy, though. I think she's pretty standard, so she's going to have to stay there. Just going to take a quick glance around here. Didn't spot anything right off the bat, but then Richard pointed out something over here. We've got this great little cast iron art deco figurine. I wonder if it wasn't a doorstop or perhaps a bookend at one point. Um, obviously she's quite pitted. Richard did find this beautiful swan hood ornament. It was amazing. Wanted to get that on camera, a little rich for our blood. And then I found the Schoenhut, uh, piano. It's a child's piano priced at only $45, which is a gosh darn good deal. This is more of a contemporary one. It's a forties and fifties. I do like the smaller ornate antique ones underneath here. We've got some beautiful dirge types. These are quite amazing. They are priced accordingly. We're seeing a lot of what I believe are Union soldiers out there. They could be Confederate soldiers. Look at this guy down here. He's priced at $300. Yeah. It really is about the subject matter with these as well as the condition. So those were cool to see, but just not where we need it to be. Small child's little travel chest there. I thought that one was really cute. This vendor has got some amazing items, including this massive Black Forest uh, cuckoo clock here. Look at that. It is huge. I've never seen a stag head mount like that on a clock before. It's just large and in charge. Quite impressive. This lamp up here is absolutely amazing. It's $2,800. Here's the interesting thing. Richard actually has one. It's in the attic right now. So he is never allowed to sell it. No, he's not. I love her. It's uh, She's like a butterfly spreading her wings. Now, I do believe this is a Fenton piece. It is, I believe, the Spanish lace or Spanish lace and fern. I could be wrong. Richard found this great mirrored cabinet. He thought perhaps it would be for your records. I thought it was quite ornate. It would be great in an office to kind of keep files in. Moving on, we did spot some cabinets here with a variety of different things. I absolutely love that blue cut to clear. I think it's quite striking. It's very sapphire in appearance. And of course, you are seeing some Roseville. Uh, prices were at retail. So again, not where I needed it to be for resale. And that's okay. And then down below here, we spotted a piece of Roseville. This is their silhouette line. We have a little wall pocket here as well as a little Ewer over here, these are earlier Roseville pieces. I love their silhouette collection. And of course, the little Fenton hand painted rooster. He's quite cute. Moving on, we've got some items here. Now, the first thing that caught my eye, of course, was this custard vase down here. It is hand painted uh, with the frit. So it's the ground up glass, it's not actually glitter there. Priced at $99, though. Moving on, we are now in the Enchanted Forest. I was a little hesitant getting in here uh, just simply because of all of the um, plant life, shall we say? It was hanging down everywhere. Richard did spot the chandelier here. It is beautiful. Now, you do believe it, if I'm remembering correctly, it was priced at 185 which isn't the world's worst. And we did spot this small oil lamp. I, you see how slowly I'm going into this booth. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to knock something over. 
This is more of a Richard piece. Now, this one was priced at $85, so definitely was not the worst uh, price on that one. Ultimately, he did decide to leave it behind. There are some others that he has that are a little bit more elaborate and make much more of a statement. Then over here to the left, there's a quick flash of all of the more 70s, 80s Capodimonte. Great little paperweight lamp here. I thought it was really cute. The vendor does have another one that Richard had spotted. Uh, I pointed out this one. He actually preferred this one here with the red shade. Obviously, the shade is not overly dynamic. I think it would be a beautiful, like a chintz floral pattern would be nice on there or perhaps something a little bit more pastel. Speaking of paperweights, check that out. So cool to see, just not where we need it to be for resale. Got a lot of little figurines. The bow somewhere there, the chalkware heads, highly detailed. I personally love those. Got some more Roseville. Love the green. Great backlit display here. I think that it really is quite striking and definitely makes the items sparkle a little bit more, making them much more appealing. Again, we've got that blue, that sapphire cut to clear. Over here, this is really interesting. We've got that dark black there cut to clear. That is quite dynamic. Great pieces to see, but again, just not where we need them to be for resale, and that is okay. Some interesting little art glass dishes here. Only $10. I don't think that they were really at a very high end, so we're going to leave those there. I love the little milk glass Santa here. Now, this is a Fenton piece. It's more of a contemporary or an anniversary piece. Um, it is, of course, signed by your artist. I thought it was really cute. I was curious as to how much it was, but $49. It's not hateful, but again, it's just not where I need it to be for resale. And that is totally okay. Let's see if they had anything else in here. Didn't really spot a whole lot. Cute little chalkware dog lamp. The lamps are a difficult sell. They're just so specific. Now, they have this labeled as a mid-century fish. I would agree. Uh, the sculpt is very mid-century, though I will say that the paint style, that matte paint, very much is uh, almost like a weller. And I thought that's who it was at first. I will say this. It is. I was really tempted by this piece. There are a number of different finishes that they did do on them, and some of them are quite high. But at $80, I just couldn't warrant picking it up. I probably would have wanted to keep it anyhow. Now, I did get distracted. This is in the opposite aisle, um, but it was so bright and sparkly and all of the Fenton, all of the Fenton happened to be 30% off. So it definitely made me take my time a little bit more. I do like the little hand-painted angel. There's quite a bit of the Burmese here. I'm The baskets just don't do it for me. I do like that Jack in the Pulpit. However, with that floral painting on the front, I think it was a little too distracting, um, which was unfortunate. Some standard milk glass, nothing that was out of the ordinary. Again, some typical carnival glass. It was great to see it all pulled together, but I just wasn't seeing anything that was wholly unique. Uh, the prices, especially with the 30% off, definitely made some good deals for collectors. It just didn't give me enough room as a reseller. Uh, but again, it was great to see them all pulled together. I love capturing all of the bright sparkly, especially with the great lighting. Uh, again, I think that's something a lot of vendors should consider. And speaking of vend or yeah, hello of vending of lights, check out these pink LEDs. I mean, this was quite unusual. I love it with those blue satins down below. It's just very cotton candy, um, very like 80s roller rink. I just I loved the use of the color in this. I know it's not for everybody, but to me, it was quite eye-catching, and it made it just that much more of a pleasurable experience. I don't know if I should have got this coin dot. I did leave it behind. Um, it's unfortunate. Now, back here, we do have some of the Fenton Turquoise Milk Glass. I love this color. It was a pain to see. Um, it was, I believe, at 40 Richard is obsessed with the bud vases. He did find a ruby red for uh, Fenton. Um, I'm not overly sold on it. I think that the, those are great. They're fun, uh, especially if it's small space. This was interesting, this Francoma little snail-like vase. It's so cute. It was only $12. I kind of, I should have got that. I should have gotten that one. Alas, I did not. It's just odd. It's, a, it's either a snail or a pipe. Do you see either one there? Cute little juicer here. That's a Japan piece, though. Now, Richard did find these clock shelves. They are crazy expensive. 
he was actually kind of interested in this one. Uh, kind of went back and forth. Definitely took some time to think about that. Uh, he does have a few. He's looking for something special. There was a mantle clock um, that I had got for him. He's looking for just the right shelf. This one's a little bit more, for lack of a better term, log cabiny. Uh, and the mantle clock that he has is much more ornate, very Art Nouveau. Again, one way to capture anybody's attention is just put a bunch of sale signs everywhere. We got 30% off anything over $20. Um, unfortunately, I didn't find anything. I did not. Those are butane candles. They're not lucite. Don't you worry. I, I saw them. <laughs> oh, no, it's the bins. Oh, boy. Don't get me started on the bins. Though I will say that I appreciate everything is kind of individually ziplocked and priced. It just makes shopping that much more easy. Some cute stuff, some kitschy Christmas, but again, uh, uh, nothing was super unique. So I, I did decide to leave all of that stuff behind. Um, again, a lot of things are in Ziploc baggies, which I really do appreciate. Saw these two little salt and pepper shakers, but uh, the whole captain and the fisherman didn't really do it for me. That lamp looks like a snare drum, though, doesn't it? Or like a cymbal or the thingies that you hit. <laughs> ah. uh, so here we've got some great display cabinets uh, filled with lots of littles. Richard did spot. Oh, I love this piece. Oh, I love the color on it. I did bust out the flashlight to see if it fluoresced. Now it is priced a little up there, but I thought, you know what? If this thing glows, we're definitely going to get it. And unfortunately, no glow. So really cool to see the little berry uh, basket here, but do decide to leave it behind. You could have actually used that one though for potpourri. You know, back in the day, the Victorians didn't really have um, a whole lot of deodorant or didn't bathe too often. So they would put dried floral spices, kind of mix those up in there to kind of do like a, a room potpourri. Mm, really cute little, um, uh, Ellie, yeah, hello. Ellie Smith, Moon and Stars on that one. 18 for the covered candy dish. The pedestal one was also 18. I wasn't super excited. I just wasn't. I know. I know. It was a, that was actually a really good get. And even for a reseller, I think there was money on it. But it's one of those things where you're just looking at it and you're like, that's okay. I want something more exciting. More exciting would have been this Roseville planter here. Get it out. The dog would really good condition there were no chips or breaks or cracks to it and then sadly i saw the price at 118 it's actually quite reasonable now we did decide to go ahead and go downstairs i love the the woodwork here on the stairs this used to be an old opera house apparently check out this basement it is just chock full of racks and the shelves are just crammed with a lot of stuff so it was a bit overwhelming when we walked down in here the expectations, the hopes were high. So we're going to start right over here on the corner. Um, it's, it's just up there's Richard in the mirror. He's the man in the mirror. Watch out folks. There's just a lot to see. So it does take some time to kind of get through here. I saw the Empoli ones here, 65 for the Amber. I believe the, the Peacock, the blue was 85, but it was marked as is. So they didn't appear to have any external damage. So chances are it would have been that glass stopper. You know, it probably was chipped. A little bit of rose, that little blue pitch. I love how squatty this one is, $40, not bad. I didn't test it out to see if it glowed. My apologies. No, it did spot a whole collection of these enamel pins. They were all priced individually. I loved how they were kind of put together. An interesting way to display them. Um, I was quite curious. So we're gonna pull this one out here. You can get all for 45 or $8. There was a total of 10 in here. That means each of the buttons uh, broke down to a little over $4. Um, so yeah, we definitely picked up the entire thing versus spending $8 for each, which I thought was a really good deal. I like that. They're just bright and fun. And I certainly think that you could still wear them today. And I think a man could get away with wearing some of them, even on a suit. Does anybody remember these charts? Remember they banned them because people were impaling themselves? Yeah, they did. There they are. Murder weapons. A lot of little planters here. 
Got some records, some vinyls, some poodles. There's a whole bunch of poodles right over on in here. We've got some Kanawa glass. This interesting little, um, it's very reminiscent of Bohemian. This is actually an Italian glass manufacturer. I've had one of these before in a different colorway. Um, I love it. It's priced at $38.99. The one I found was only $5. So I'm going to go ahead and set that one back. <laughs> Carefully. So bright, fun, sparkly, just nothing unique enough for me to really want to get. Got some little place card holders there. Those are cute. The little rosettes here and the other little flowers. Lots of little figurines, but again, nothing that was super unique. Some great little vintage valentines here. Cute little anthropomorphic looks to be a tomato. We've got some very nice chalkware. Condition is great on those. They're still nice and shiny. But the fruits, vegetables, they don't command as much as maybe some of the anthropomorphic animals do. Again, the pull together of green. I've been seeing this a lot more. The green is just where it's at apparently right now. A very quick panorama there. And oh, look, there is a maze. Antique Alley. So we decided that we're going to go ahead go into the into the Antique Alley. It's just a hallway. And then each of the vendors has their own little room. Uh, I will say this, the floor was very interesting. It was a little spongy in certain areas. So, yeah. We'll pop right over here. It's just a bunch of tools, kind of like the Mantique kind of thing. Uh, not really the market in which I sell for, though I will say, and I am aware, that a lot of, and especially antique tools, can really command some high dollars. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know really what to look out for. It's just something that, I mean, hey, if you're into it, go for it. There is a market for it. Uh, the Antique Alley. Um, hmm. I will say this. I, I wasn't overly impressed with anything. Prices were kind of all over the place. Um, some of the booths were exceptionally difficult to shop. So, yeah, we decided to go ahead and head back upstairs. We literally only found those enamel pins down there. Again, we're back upstairs. Seeing a little bit more Fenton here, the blue satin, the, the milk glasses. Again, more of the custard. Very popular here. A little bit of the amber and clear. Did spot a little bluebird here. I like the attachment of the uh, candlestick here. This little guy is priced at unfocused $19.99. He is signed Ron Ray, so cute, but just not where I want it to be. Again, the blue milk glass. Now, I do believe this is Indiana glass. Oh, Imperial? I think that might be Indiana. Could be. $18, not the world's worst. There is a good market for these, but I wasn't excited by the mini banana boat, so I left it. I know I did. I did, even though I love the color. I can't help it. Bunch of Thai beanie babies. No, no thank you. Mm-mm. Not what we're doing. A little bit of the blue uh, Fenton marble glass there. Don't spot anything there. We're going to move on. As you can see, I mean, there is definitely a lot of stuff on the shelves, but I was really on the struggle bus trying to find anything for resale. Pretty little blue iridescent candy dish here. $30, not two, or $29, pardon me. Oh, look, there's another one of the Westmoreland. Alliance. Got some cute little paperweights, but nothing overly exciting to me. Yeah, nope. Okay, so Richard actually found this really interesting compote. The ruffles are not very uniform. I love the color and the swirl pattern on this. It's very fluid, very ocean-like. So we did pick that piece up, so that was cool. We've got a whole bunch of smalls throughout here. Um, again, price is just not where I needed it to be, but I loved the pull together. Now, they ended up using little Christmas lights there, which I'm not mad at. I'm not mad at it at all. I love the color blocking. I think it makes shopping that much easier. Got some ambers and cameo glass there in the Fenton. And your typical uh, marigold carnival glass. I love this Celadon green glaze, a little crock here, but at $25, it's a pretty significant chip on there, so no. This is kind of creepy. It's real rabbit fur. It's a little doll head muff, because why not? They did some strange stuff. Interesting clock here. Unfortunately, there was a piece of the molding. I love the figural face on there. 
Um, Richard said it was more of a contemporary piece, and with the damage, it just wasn't where it would need to be. So it was still cool aesthetically. I think you could get away with it. Maybe a little bit of a repair work if you did some mill work. I that I definitely that is beyond my crafting abilities. Another little dirge of type, sixty dollars. Spotted a lot of those little lead soldiers here recently. Again, just nothing for us, so we'll go ahead and move on. Now, this is definitely a Richard Booth. All of the wall clocks, we've got the cuckoo clocks. A lot of them are in working condition. Obviously, which you'll find it with a lot of antique malls that are dealers that are specializing in clocks. A lot of them are very skilled tradesmen, so they're able to repair the clocks and get them back into working condition. This is really cool. I love the, uh, the pot metal up here with the Atlas figure on there holding up the universe. Some condition issues, but yeah. Now there is an upper level. Um, we were about to head up there and then there was another room over here. Um, uh, you just, it's more of a contemporary furniture. There are some accessories throughout. Um, we did spot some nice things, but most of it was just not the right kind of vintage, shall we say. Just nothing that I was, I was really looking for. Richard really didn't spot anything. Um, he did spot this pretty little uh, ruby red optic kind of empoli and style honeycomb effect to it. He was being a smarty, so he, I couldn't get it. And... <laughs> Uh, but it was contemporary. Now, next to the uh, honeycomb vase was this cute little wood clown. He was missing his little decal. He's $20. If the decal was all there, it probably would have snatched him up. He's a, he's a fun little fellow. He loves to dance. I think he's very cute. Again, we've got some more color blocking. I really appreciate that. And we're moving over into the greens. And again, this is just a prime example of just because things are from a different area, different time periods, maybe they have different, um, you're mixing uh, mid-century with antiques. Work with a color story and it will all go together and just make for a lot of visual appeal. $15 for a hand-painted tidbit tray. That's really not that bad, especially given how good the painting is on there. Moving on, this just kind of, uh, a bit of a hodgepodge. Um, again, there's a lot of stuff to see, and there just wasn't that much for me to buy. Sad but true. A lot of oil lamps here, which didn't spot anything that were unique enough. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go upstairs. Stairs are really cool. It's got the old little metal runs on them. Not going to butcher that name, but it, again, it was an opera house. We are now on the second floor. Truthfully, about the only interesting thing that I saw on the second floor were the steps and then and the wood floors, which were original. And up here, we've got the balcony. And in the balcony were some creepy mannequins staring out at us. Don't know how I feel about that, sir, ma'am. Mind your business. So, uh, yeah, again, a lot of contemporary items mixed in. There was a few vintage items, um, but it was mostly contemporary. So just not where we're looking for. Not that I'll turn my nose up, but a good collectible contemporary. Sure won't, especially if it's got a vintage vibe to it. Now, in this booth, the vendor had quite a few things, and there was one particular piece that I spotted. It was this very interesting teardrop uh, paperweight, unfortunately, it was priced at $40 for this uh, amazing, very hard to get paperweight. That's it. We're going to wrap it up. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, there you have today's shop with me video. It was definitely a tour. We got the brooches, the uh, turquoise compote, which was an interesting piece. It's very aquatic in its sculpt and color. Um, there were some beautiful antique pieces, a lot of the clocks. Certainly, um, there was some great glass. Prices were all over the board, I would say that. A lot of new stuff, which was, eh, it is what it is. It kind of seems to be the name of the game anymore, but overall, it is what it is, I guess. I hope you guys had a good time. If there's something that you saw that you wished I had picked up, definitely let me know. And as always, guys, until next time, remember, 
Keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys. You can say bye. Goodbye. <laughs> bye.